So I've been building parachutes for about uh, 20 years now, and uh, one of the things that I continue to uh, get a lot of enjoyment from. Very peaceful, you know, to, to hang out in, in my my own space and do something that uh, is kind of unequivocal. You know, it's it's uh, neat to to take a bunch of fabric and sew it together and make something that that flies. <laughs> so, uh, but I've noticed some some parallels. Um, between building canopies and jumping them. Um, one of them is I noticed that, of course, you know, both of them have some um, you know, performance issues associated with them, and both of them have significantly uh, profound uh, consequences to the outcome. So if I do a good job, good things happen. If I do a bad job, you know. <laughs> so uh, I noticed that... that uh, going into the process of, of sewing, I have to be in the right state of mind, and, and that's kind of the same thing as skydiving, where you know I have to be well fed, well rested, you know, in the right mood. If I'm not in the right mood, I just I don't sit down. I'll I'll maybe spend a few minutes stretching, you know, and relax, and uh, maybe I need to hydrate myself better. But um, once I'm in the right mood, um, I still find that I've I can get too much adrenaline surging, and I have to remember to stop, you know, and if I'm pushing a bad mood or I'm pushing a bad speed, bad things happen, so I, um, I have to recognize that I'm forcing it, just like a skydive, and take a second, you know, and, and step back, and you can do that in free fall, you know, you just take a moment, you just stop, relax, breathe, and then get back to, to what you were trying to do, whether it's flying to a formation or to, to build one. Um, it's uh, it's really it's important to to try to put your best foot forward. Um, and the other thing that I notice as a parallel is that speed is part of it. Obviously, you know we want to like for instance, if you're building lots of formations, you know, um, it's your goal in you know a lot of skydiving is to get so efficient that you're not don't feel like you're trying hard to go fast. You're just minimizing the wasted energy. Um, so I try to line the fabric up ahead of time, for instance. Um, just like you know, getting the visualization of a skydive in my head, and I try to make sure that um, I've, I've cleared the way in my mind for that that perfect jump. And <clears throat> then, consequently, as a result of my efficient uh, setup. Even the hard things just feel easy. I just you know, kind of let it happen instead of forcing it. Uh, so there's there's definitely some adventure wisdom <laughs> messages in the in the the building of canopies, just like the the skydiving. It's uh, it's a matter of taking your time and and looking ahead. So in this case, what I'm doing is sewing a rib to a, a top surface panel. In this particular rib happens to be the center cell one. And so I need to, to first of all, I'm going to have to trim this, and I'm going to have to look ahead to make sure it's going to line up. And if it isn't going to line up just right, I need to work the fabric a little bit to make sure that it does. It's natural that, uh, that things won't necessarily be going perfectly uh, with your skydive or with your life in general. A couple of pieces, pieces of fabric that you're trying to line up. So the main thing is that you, you sort of anticipate, uh, is this coming together right? And if not, do something about it. Um, don't wait until it's it's too late. You know, if you're too low to flare, you're too low to flare, right? So um, you have to anticipate uh, things that that might be changing, and then uh, and then as a result of your anticipation and correct adaptation along the way, you say, oh, well, okay, I'm it's working. <laughs> you know, I'm putting it together the way I intended. Um, because of that that awareness that I had, um, so here you know there's uh, there's obviously some little things that I can do with my fingers and how I'm loading each piece of fabric. But if I do it the right way, I'm proud of it, and that's.
that's a really good uh, part of, of what we're, what I do here, you know, sitting here and sewing. Uh, it doesn't always come together perfectly. That time it did. But it's also, you know, about correcting mistakes. You know, there's no perfect skydivers. There's no perfect parachute technicians. But there can be a series of corrected mistakes that end up putting you on the mark. And so, um, hopefully, someday I'll come across this Lotus 190, and I'll be really happy with the way that it, it turned out. You know, I'll, I'll see it down the road, and it'll be it'll be just right. Um, and, and, you know, I'll be pleased with uh, with my work. So again, you know, coming coming to another place here, right, right by the end. Does the fabric line up the way I wanted to? Yeah, it pretty much does. Um, but not exactly. That's fine. You know, it, it, in the end, um, this will come together perfectly. But along the way, it wasn't always perfect. And I think that's the most important message is that uh, you're going to have to make corrections. When you're talking about an approach landing, you're talking about building a canopy, there's going to be imperfections along the way that can be corrected, but if you're busy beating yourself up about the mistake or trying to cover up your mistakes, they'll never get fixed, and you'll never be proud of your work. So in this case, I'm very proud of the way this seam came together. You know, I just <laughs> created... Uh, a seam that I'm really quite happy with. Stro sewing as straight as an arrow. I don't see anything wrong with the stitching, and I'm going to check both sides of it. Um, but I, I honestly think that uh, anybody can do whatever they put their mind to if they take the time to set high standards, not beat themselves up about it, And in the end, they've done something special. Uh, they've, uh, they've created something that wasn't there before. So that's, uh, that's one of the things that I've learned from building parachutes. And I will, one of the reasons why I, why I will continue to do it. Uh, if I create something beautiful, then a piece of that becomes a piece of me. And that's pretty cool. Thanks for joining. I'm Brian Jermaine.
Virgins of heaven And like philosophy Your kite must somehow Be tied out to ground The gun, or you stick your head into the sparkling water. And those deep were gone again, as my life was gone again. And those deep were gone again, as my life was gone again. Water, melon, sugar. Water, melon, sugar. Water, melon, sugar. Pastel pictures chopped upon the sidewalk washing away.